Hey friends, today I'm here to talk to you about why you might want to switch to EZD6, okay? Uh, well, you know, I'm the game creator, so of course I want you to switch. But you know that little recent mess we had with this big megacorp that wants you to play game, that wants you to do things their way? Well, you know, there are other options that you can do. You don't have to be in that with, within that megacorp, right? You don't have to be subject to the whims of that megacorp. You can come out and explore with other fun games. And of course, I want to talk into playing my game because I love it. But I thought it might be interesting to sh or talk about people who have talked about the game. I thought I would, show, I would uh, read you some, qu some uh, quotes from my Facebook group for EZD6, and uh, they were talking about why they like to play it. And I thought this was interesting because, of course, I can tell you all day <laughs> why you should play it, right? Um, you know, because um, it's my game. But with other people, you know, saying how much they like it and what they like about it, I thought it'd be interesting to read you their comments so you can make up your own mind. And then I'll make uh, I'll make comments on their comments um, just to make sure everything's clear to everybody and you know kind of my headspace when I was you know doing the game. Okay, so let me start here. The first one is um, you know why should you play Easy D6? And because some, uh, Gareth said because all the cool kids are playing it. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know how cool I am, <laughs> but uh, I know a lot of great people play it and a lot of people love it. And Chris says that the simplified rules make it easy for a new player um, with most of the lackey monsters having only one strike uh, and you can get some really cool cinematic like battles. And I agree with that. Um, I've changed hit points to strikes and the minion types just have one strike. So you just got to hit them once and they're dead. So that's really great for those cinematic type battles. Uh, now, Joel says the ease of use with, ju uh, with just enough complexity. Now, that doesn't tell you a lot about why, but that was my mindset when I was going to when I was doing the game. I was like, how much do I need in the game to give it enough to feel like you know all the everything all the bases are covered, but remove as as many rules as possible. Any rule that's not absolutely needed, remove it. And that's what I did with Easy D6. Uh, Chuck said. It started with the idea that I could introduce my 11-year-old daughter to RPG gaming and turned into a fast, fun, and effective way to have a game night on short notice. I'm still kind of hard-pressed to see the long-term campaign potential without leveling, uh, number crunching, but that's just indoctrination from over 25 years of other systems. Uh, it goes to mention D&D, Pathfinder, the others. Um, yeah, that has been a staple of RPG gaming for a long time. But I would argue that you should make your reward story-based and not just random pop-based, right? Like, oh, I hit the experience point, like, boop, I, I suddenly have something, right? Or I suddenly have a new power. Why not just make it story-based? Um, a lot of the magic items in EZD6 are amazing. And so they they really up the power of your, of your player. So when you get a magic sword in EZD6, it's not like getting a plus one sword in D&D. It's like a big power boost, right? So, you know, those magic items really go a long way to giving your, your character abilities. Plus, you can give them story abilities. So, like, the game is so... E you're not going to break the game if you do this. If you give them things that they trained in the game or, you know, things that revolve around the story, it won't break the game at all like some other games it would. Well, what? it's not fair. They got another ability and I didn't get one. Um, so ma you can make it story-based very easily. And uh, Candy says, because it's awesome. <laughs> it's great for seasoned players as well as newbies. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story about Candy. Um, she was going with a friend of mine to conventions. It wouldn't play games. Uh, her husband convinced her to try my game and she fell in love with it and now she has branched out into other games. So I was kind of her lead into other harder games because the game is so easy to learn. You sit down, it's so quick to learn, you can make a character in five to ten minutes and you, you really don't have to learn any rules at all. The, the Rabble Rouser or the Game Master can just tell you the rules as you go. It's, it's that simple. It's that simple. 
Um, and here's a, here's, a, here's kind of a long one. So Brandon says, I played D&D for around 20 years when I found EZD6. I'd already started to change my mindset because of Professor Dungeon Master, which is a good friend of mine on Dungeon Craft, and Brandish Gilhelm, my partner in crime on EZD6, on Runehammer. When EZD6 came along, it was the final piece of my puzzle to what to me is the perfect RPG experience. Wow, thank you, Brandon. I still use the names of the original classes rather than the hero paths. My my classes are called hero paths. Uh, hit, he calls them hit points instead of strikes, and he calls it armor, armor class instead of armor, but that's just because of my familiarity with the classic terms. So he's, he's using my rules, he's just calling them something different, right? Which, that's great, you know, uh, do what works for you is what I say. But I love the way uh, the mechanics remove the things that I never liked about RPGs. Although I also do still have that tendency to want to create some form of character advancement beyond just magic items, and I think EZD6 could easily have character development mechanics in integrated. Either way, I don't plan to go back to the rules-heavy D&D games of my past, and will be using EZD6 as the core mechanic of my games going forward. So pretty cool. Yeah, I've I've heard you guys on this advancement, and I actually think I have a happy medium that I'm going to introduce uh, in the future. I have some projects going on right now, but I do plan to introduce that in the future. I think it will it will satisfy both camps: those people that kind of want to level up, and those people that just want to do story rewards that don't break the game. Right. So I think I've found that happy medium. Uh, Tommy says uh, five minute characters and ten minute setup. I, that that's so perfect it's so true i mean you wouldn't believe it with most rpgs that you could possibly ever do that um i've had you know that's what the special session zero comes from right it's just like you just sit there and have a whole session of making a character and like i would argue what fun is that like get your character on paper and discover who they are you know in the game have fun uh matt says i love focusing on the story over rules I want to give my players a memorable experience and an adventure they'll talk about for years to come. Easy D6 allows me to focus most of my time on, and efforts on those things. As I have mentioned, I love how portable the rules are. I feel like after having run it just a few times, I could run it without the book. So true. Uh, both these things add up to lots of fun and awesome adventuring. That is a great point. You're not going to have these rules lawyers you know, stop in the game every few minutes, you know, to, to oh, that's not right, or we got to look that up or whatever. The rules are so simple um, that you you really don't have to look up rules, and I think that's a great aspect. And and it, it takes out the what I call the rules breaks, right? Rules breaks destroy the narrative because you got to keep look if you got to keep looking up rules and pausing the game, you're pausing the fun. <laughs> Right, you're not just you're not just pausing the game. You're pausing the fun, and you're pausing the story. It's like when you kind of, when you keep hitting the pause button, you're trying to watch a show and you keep hitting the pause button. Just think how annoying that is. Or commercials come on. So I try to avoid all of that and this and make it move uh, s smoothly and and perfectly uh, for the players. And you never have to look up stuff. Um, Kevin says ease of the system. Also, the relationship between EZD6 and ICRPG, and if there could be some sort of melding in the future. That's very interesting. I mean, Brandish and I are working very closely together uh, to make these products, and the next product coming out is the Book of Quests, which I'm so super excited about. 18 quests for EZD6. Um, new monsters, new magic items. But I think you're going to love the format. It's so easily digestible, like EZD6, but it's in quest form. It's like quests that you can easily digest and run for your players, you know, uh, without a lot of prep. So I can't wait for that book to come out. And then Steve says, I played many sessions as a player and a rabble rouser, RR, and not once has there been an argument or even a prolonged delay due to rules questions. That's one thing I really wanted to take out of the game, like I said earlier, are these pauses for the rules. Like, they're so distracting. And so I love that comment. Let's see what Brent says. I played D&D for decades. When I first started, my friends and I played with D6s borrowed from whatever board games we had in the closet. For a while, I played using rules mixed with Hero Quest and Dragon Strike. Along with 2E, D&D, I've always preferred using D6s. 
Easy D6 takes me back to what I love most about gaming. Wow, that's that's a heartwarming statement to me. I think that's so fantastic because uh, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty old dude. So I was back the you know the very start of D and D and playing it myself. So I get you there. I get you there. And uh, Jason says. The magic system is so unique. Look look how creative you can be with it. Demo demonstrating ma made-up spells on the fly. That is cool, funny, and yet contained. I always look at, at the game's use of magic system as well as the game's mechanical ease of use. That is a great point because that's what I do too. When I look at a fantasy system, I look at... I may love the rest of the mechanics, but if I don't like the magic system... The game is ruined to me. And I've seen so many games like that. Oh, they have pretty good mechanics, but the magic system just doesn't get me, right? I just don't like it. It's either boring or it's old hat or, you know, not creative. Um, any, any number of things. I wanted to make this magic system super easy to use, but, you know, really creative for the players and easy to run. You know, um, so I, I'm I'm really happy with how the magic system came out in this game. Um, and Tobias says, uh, the promise of introducing new players to the hobby while not scaring them away with the rules and mechanics that only makes sense to people who grew up with these terms. That is so true. Like I said about Candy, she could sit, she could make a character and sit down at my game and not be afraid to play with people who were experienced players, right? Because I think in some other games, people feel intimidated. Like they come in and they know all these terms and rules and all this stuff, and they don't know it, and the new player doesn't know anything, and they're super intimidated. There's none of that with AZD6. They're all on equal footing. Everything, every player is equally valid, whether you're a, a RPG veteran, you know, who's been playing for years like me, or you're just a new person, you know, uh, getting into this hobby. So I think that's really fantastic that you take players, fledgling players, and not make them afraid of the game, make them have a blast and want to play again. So Chris says, Easy D6 is the only game that lets the RR, well, the game master, uh, the freedom to focus on fun of the adventure without being bogged down with rules. It frees players' imagination as well, lets them be more creative and innovative, encourages thinking outside the box while being super easy to learn and actively promoting collaboration and fun at the table. During my first session, we went through five combats, and in other systems, usually it would be one or two max. Uh, it is the only system you will ever need. I cannot recommend it highly enough. The game moves so quickly. You won't believe how much content you get through. When I was introducing this system to other people, I, that was one of the first comments I got. I was like, wow, we got through so much content in one session. I can't believe we did that. And it's like, because I said, there's no rules breaks. There's no looking up stuff. There's no checking your sheet. You don't really have to even look at your sheet barely through the whole game, which is, you can't say that for many RPGs, right? Um, and then Eric says... Why? Because it's easy. It's right in the name. <laughs> exactly. Easy D6. And that's why I put it in there, because it's so easy. Uh, and so Hound says, One thing my player said is combat is way quicker than D&D, &D, where one battle might last a few hours, whereas an Easy 6 is a madcap, quick and furious, allowing more time for getting on with other aspects of play. And the question to use karma or accumulated is always present, which adds a fun decision even when you fail at something. Karma is a great player-facing rule that they get to spend to increase their roles. And what I like is um, you get karma when you fail a role, right? Because in other games, it really sucks to fail a role. You just you wasted you you set you set yourself up, you roll and it fails, right? Mwah, that sucks. But in this game, you get a reward for it, right? So it, the the boo boo doesn't sting as bad. Plus, if you have enough karma to maybe make that work, you might say, oh, "We got a big boss coming up. Maybe I'll let this fail because I want to get another karma and be ready for the boss, <laughs> right?" So it's a good it's a it's a neat decision that the players have to make during the game, and it adds fun to the game. Um. So David says, "Easy D6 does it quick." Simply and creatively. The base idea is simply 
uh, is simple and the flavor is added on top to add drama and excitement. There is a simple mechanic roll, a d6. If things are going in your favor, roll two and take the best. If, if it's going against you, roll two, take the lowest. And that's it. Just telling a story and using a few simple mechanics to get it down. Personally, what I love the most is how much simpler it is to run. I don't have to spend all my time focusing on what abilities players have. Got a boon? Cool. Magic? What does it say? Okay, sounds fun. Roll with it. I don't have six players with rules being pulled out of six different source books with paragraphs of abilities. Uh, it's a sentence or two and then a name and it's done. Like in the book, yeah, it's a sentence or two and it's done. There's no paragraphs of rules that you're supposed to follow. Um, you know, you know this, this amount of distance away, this amount of turns, blah, 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 blah. Um, there's none of that in the game. So it just takes all that out. That, that, that last paragraph that he said. Uh, so Joey says, the rule of cool is great in any game. It's nice to have rules built around it. That is perfection, Joey. That's exactly <laughs> what I was going for. The rule of cool. You know, um, we want to have rules to, so it's not just a free, free-for-all argument about who killed who, right? You got to have that. Um, but, you know, you can make those rules work in a way that accentuates the cool things that people want to do without getting in the way of what they want to do. Right. And, uh, I really had that in mind when I built the, when I built the game. Uh, so Brandon says, uh, I said it in a previous post, but easy six is probably the best means of playing other game settings without committing to a game system. There are a lot of games that have fantastic lore, but mechanics are borderline user hostile. <laughs> to be honest, Scotty, I think you may have created a system that can give that can rival GURPS for flexibility, especially once you release rules for sci-fi, horror, post-apocalyptic, and cyberpunk. And actually, it's fun to play. No offense if you like GURPS, uh, but that game hurts my head to play. <laughs> oh, I get what you mean, man. I get what you mean. Now, it's funny you say that because right now, this very moment, I am working on a post-apocalyptic uh, setting playset for EZD6 called Wasted World. So I love post-apocalyptic settings, and the play tests have been so fun and fantastic. I can't wait to get it to you, but th I'm working on that right now. But I have played other settings at conventions as one-shots. I've done Star Trek-inspired games just because I want to have my own lore, but I want it to be Star Trek-like. I've done Rocket Patrol, so retro science fiction. I've done hardcore science fiction. I've done time-traveling people who are fighting Terminator teddy bears. I've done, <laughs> I've done all kinds of crazy fun stuff with this system. It's so easy to mold and shape into any genre you want. Um, and that's one thing I love about it. So you're going to see more of those in the future. And that's, that's what people have said, you know, in my post um, about the game. And I think it was great to read you guys those because it's coming from them, not from me, right? I, I'm responding, of course, but they're telling you their experiences with the game. And it's not me. Oh, I love my game. It's so great. <laughs> well, I do, but, you know. <laughs> so I hope you guys will consider Easy D6 as an alternative to, you know, that big corporate thing. <laughs> and they've backed off now, but, you know, they can do anything they want anytime to you. And with, you know, I'm part of Runehammer um, with Brandish, and he has had an open game license for uh, ICRPG for years. And that is not going to change. He has made that perfectly clear. And eventually, I want to do it with EZD6. We've already talked about this. I'm going to do this with EZD6 after I get some stuff published, more stuff published. But, you know, we're going to open it up. And his game has been open for years, like I say, with, no, you know, and you can trust, you can trust Brandish. He, I mean, he is, you know, he loves the games. He loves the players. Uh, you know, his, his thing is never going to change. He's not going to change it one day and you're all screwed, right? Like some big corporation. He is an individual game designer who loves games. And when he came to me, uh, you know, when I showed him my game and he came to me and wanted to produce it, I was blown away because he's amazing. He's an amazing producer of games. And I think, you know, uh, together we knocked it out of the park. And we've got so many more coming down the pipe. And like I say, the next book, the book of quests for EZD6, 
uh, is frankly amazing. I, <laughs> I'm so excited to get it in your guys' hands, and it should be coming out soon. So please consider EZD6 as your next game of choice. You guys take care. Bye-bye.